be honest, I'm struggling a little bit as the series goes on. We're having trouble finding things that are new and interesting about poker because it's so boring. Mm -hmm. um, and our players keep losing. Yeah. And they don't seem to like us very much anymore. Yeah. I was hoping you could maybe give us some tips about like how to talk to them, how to maybe make them win. Yeah, so, um, you know, it's like not everyone can do this and right. you know, not everybody's gonna make the players kind of flower and flourish and like find their inner self. But I would say um, players really tend to, to be more warm when they know that you are interested in their, their failures. This is a hypothetical, but what if you're not interested in them really at all? Yeah. Or as like their profession or them as people? Yeah. Like does that get in the way ever for you or do you just fake it? It might seem, you know, like they're they're not maybe the most energetic or they're maybe not always the most entertaining. Interesting. Yeah, interesting, exactly. Right. But sometimes if you can just um, get past that, this is infinitely more fascinating than than Justin Bieber or any anybody that maybe has like a lot of charisma um, on the outside. Right. So like the fact that they are kind of bland and mean, mm -hmm. that's interesting. Yeah, that's like actually it's like when you really look at the vanilla. Vanilla. That's, that's a good word for That's where you find it. the spice. I've actually vanilla is great. That's a good point because I wanted to talk about the diversity of all of this. I think at this point there's more women than men playing in the tournament. Yeah. And uh, very few white men yeah, in like their thirties. For sure. Pretty much any time I interview a woman, I want to make sure to ask them, you know, what is it like to be a woman in poker? Right. What so that does was, it feel that's the like? question I was thinking. Yeah. Of. Yeah. I don't that's really have a follow-up. Yeah. That's just a topic that's really been uh, avoided. No People, one talks about nobody. it. Nobody. Like, what about maybe their natural kind of feminine character makes them? Like, does that get in the way of, of poker because they're naturally meek? Right. And, and like, are women just, like, not smart, you right. know? Like, that, that's something wow. you might want to get on. Like, their brains maybe are smaller or something. They're smaller so, brains? Yeah. And, like, that they're afraid to gamble because they just um, don't have balls. So right. That's they don't something. have balls. Yeah. That that's something you want to talk to them about, probably. <laughs> All right, so I busted day four of the main event, barely inside the money. There was still 645 people left when I got knocked out. And once that happened, I had about an hour or so of misery, and then it immediately shifted to railing one of my good friends from Muskegon, Michigan, Nick Mannion. He just kept track of how my stack was doing. He kept asking for pictures of the stack so that we could make a montage after. Day six was when things really went crazy. Uh, he was 89 of 89 at one point. I went from 650,000 at the 40 and 80K level to I doubled up and then I won an almost double up pot. And then he texts me like an hour or two later and he's just like, I have six and a half million. There's 65 people left now. I'm like, all right, well, do you want to get some dinner? Yeah, I, I've always asked Jordan certain situations on cash hands, tourney hands. I've always come to Jordan to pick his brain. At certain levels, you can kind of play tighter, and then when there's big ante stages, when there's those jumps, you have to kind of open up, or else you get left in the dust by the rest of the field. Up until this year, I hadn't been to the World Series, and I played the 2175 Mega Satellites into the main event. On day five, he put the Solve for Y shirt on. I mean, it was his idea, and I was like, obviously, Yes, yeah, that'd be great. That'd be fantastic. Actually, I asked Jordan for a shirt uh, day one. I wanted a Solve for Y shirt, and he charged me $25 for it. <laughs> Christian, Matt Hunt, and Brian have been down here every day. Corey's been down here every day. Corey's known Nick for as long as I have, and Christian and Matt, they were just like, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll go down there. We can get the, the feed up on our iPad see what other people had, relay the information to them. There were certain hands that I had questioned and I wanted to make sure that if I was thinking the right way or if I was just totally off on certain things that I had seen people do. We're getting ready to get started. There's six left, Nick's second in chips. We're gonna play down until we get rid of three people tonight. If he makes it through to tomorrow, guaranteed 3.7 million, gets heads up, 
$5 million in his pocket, but we want to take home the wristwear for 8.8 .8 million fucking dollars. How sick would that be? The winner is in this room. <laughs> remember that you're in my hands and remember that I know the future better than you know the past. It started off really, really well for Nick. Uh, within two orbits, Aram Zobian was all in and he was called and he busted. So right there, we're moving up from 1.8 million guaranteed to 2.15 million guaranteed. After Zobian bust, there's five left and Joe Cata starts to open up a little bit. He looked like he knew he had a certain game plan and he'd stuck to it because he chipped up pretty decently that day. He opens with pocket tens. He's got about 47, 48 million. Tony Miles, who has somewhere in the neighborhood of 55 million, three bets in. Joe elects to just shove, and Tony calls him with ace king. Tony wins the flip, and Joe's out, so down to four. Jordan was just telling me, you know, basically keep staying patient like you are, but make sure you do make the moves when you do need to make the moves. I would say that my main role was to just kind of keep him grounded when things were going either really well or started going poorly. Do you need Mountain Dew to keep you going? <laughs> or it's just certain small things. It's the positivity helps your mindset for the game. At that stage of the tournament, it's very clearly a first and second, and then Nick and John are down here. Yeah, it, it's interesting. It's interesting how my, like there was a hand where Miles three bet ace nine of diamonds uh, versus uh, Dyer's open and Dyer had king queen offsuit. So that's usually not a formation that we see often where like big stack versus big stack lines a three bet there uh, with a merged hand out of position. But if they're going to be playing the merge aggressively like this against each other, it's very favorable for us, especially if we're just going to be like taking like reshub spots and not really like getting involved too much outside of that. Nick has a little bit of a lead on John until Nick defends Queen Jack of Hearts out of the big blind. I had a game plan on one hand of bluffing and just got rivered by Sin. That tournament could have been real different if he didn't hit that flush on the river. So when that happens, Nick goes from 40 million to 20 and John goes from 20 to 40. I wasn't too worried about being the short stack because the whole tournament I was pretty short stack. So I wasn't panicking, I was just hoping that I could get the cards that I needed at the time. So you got short stacked and then someone told me about some like pocket sevens shove or Christian was saying he was on ESPN so I recorded it but. Meanwhile we're about to have a flip. What, what are you doing? Don't go all in. Everybody, Don't fold. Geez. Everybody fold. Do not call this man's bet. Oh God. Why would you go all in on sevens? They can have eights, they can have nines, they have twelves. What's going, what are you doing? Good flop. Good flop. Still a big sweat. That's good. That's good, I think. No straight flush. No straight flush. Yes! That's right. That's right. We're getting rich, Gatsby. We're getting rich. After playing for another hour or so, he's able to get it in with a flush draw versus Dyer with the 7-5 of hearts. Open shoved and he called pretty quickly and I knew I needed a heart. As soon as that heart came, he was drawn dead. That was one of the best moments. Once you do get down to a stack depth that is going to just be all interfolding, that's a time to kind of insert myself in Christian because we can give him concrete advice. Any, any high suit of connectors. If Miles is not in, any is. Any is. Any high suited connector. So like eight, seven, and up, all in. And any pair. That's not aces and kings. I think it's just flat aces and kings. I think it's sin so Matt Hunt saying Hunt saying like so far he hasn't got he hasn't opened anything that surprised me. He's moderately loose on the button, but not loose enough that I that we can attack him. We just have to say like overall just shove tighter against Sun. So at this point it was a race to outlast Dyer because he was down to 40 million or so and so was Nick. In the final hand, 
John opens the button to four million with two kings, and Nick finds ace 10 off in the big blind, a layup shove, John calls, and the kings hold. When I first went down to rail Nick on the end of day five, I made sure to tell him 10 times, enjoy this. Just be in the moment because you need to acknowledge how cool this is. That was the most amazing part, is seeing all the people that were supporting me flying out on red eyes just to get out there and support me and keep me positive, keep, me, keep my head in the game. It was a great experience for him from not even playing the main event a few days prior to it starting to all of a sudden having $2.8 million is, I don't even know if he's woke up yet. As soon as you walk away from the table after your brain is constantly thinking and processing everything, when you walk away from the table, it hits you and you're just drained and instantly just ready to be relaxing and enjoying time with family. Wow. So are people just like coming out of the woodwork, just like asking you for money now? There has been a ton of new Facebook messages and there was even one, uh, some person on Instagram talking about how they got robbed of $8,000 and they've, they've sent probably 8, 15 messages. Wow. Oh, will you send me money? Can you send me money? So it's, it's just strange how when something like this happens, where people come from. Yeah. People are weird, man. Um, you know, if you are looking for an investment opportunity, uh, I don't know how much you know about renewable energies, but Lunar is really coming strong next year. The science isn't in yet, but it seems to me like the sun goes down, it's just you and those moon rays, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We'll talk about it later. Look, I want to ask you, what do you think it's like to be a woman in poker? <laughs> 